For a better understanding of what follows, you may want to first watch the video Verb Aspects Disassembly. We'll look at two topics in Russian verb grammar. The first is verbs of motion, which are a subcategory of the imperfective aspect that exhibits a variation in the internal structure of processes. And the second topic is verb prefixes that contribute specific semantics to the result of the action conveyed by the perfective aspect. In Slavic languages, verbs are divided into two functional groups called aspects, where each verb is a dictionary entry with its infinitive and conjugative forms, as well as the imperative and participles, tenses are thus complementary to aspects. The concept of aspect is based on the temporal structure of the relevant action within the time frame of the situation being described. The imperfective aspect refers to a conceptually uniform state of affairs regardless of its internal structural details. It can be an action in progress or a cyclic repeated action or a static state. The imperfective verb pisać is an infinitive meaning to write or to be writing, that is, it denotes both the progression and the repetitive action of writing, as well as the occupation of a writer. In the past tense, the imperfective is also used to convey a statement of fact, such as I have written with a quill cool pen before, where the verb refers to the entire period specified in the context and conveys the past experience through the idea of process, as there is no explicit completion to it implied. In contrast, the perfective aspect embodies a transition between two states within the same time frame. The final state gets focus and holds within the current context, thus effectively forming a particular complete scenario, such as napisać, to write a book, meaning completely. Perfective verbs can be used in the past and future tense, but not in the present. Either the book is already written or this result is yet to come. When the context specifies the time of the event, it indicates the moment of transition to the result, but this conditional boundary cannot be attributed to the now moment. Even something that has just happened appears to be in the past as soon as we only think about it. The perfective aspect can convey the completion of a process, or its inception, or a complex scenario as a whole, or a point like singular act. Additional logic of this kind comes from lexical meanings, including those of verb prefixes. Perfective forms are most often formed with a variety of prefixes, which denote certain temporal and spatial patterns. So the already mentioned perfective napisać, literally on to write, means to write something completely. The perfective dopisać, up to write, means to finish the rest of the text. Popisać means to write for a while. Such variety is inevitable since the perfective aspect itself only embodies the general principle of transition to a resultant state, which lacks a specific logic. This logic is provided by the prefixes, which bring additional semantics. So, vipisać means to copy out something once, peripisać means to rewrite something once. Despite some similarities with English phrasal verbs, these are perfective forms denoting only single complete actions. So many of them in turn require their own imperfective projections in order to represent their specific resultative scenarios as progressions or repeat cycles. The secondary imperfective forms used for that have the same root and prefix, and in addition the suffix uv, or some kind of alternation in the stem, the form periписывать conveys the action of rewriting, in progress or iterated. In most cases these forms only mark the change of aspect, but formally they are just as separate verbs, except however that the aspects affect the conjugation table. The present tense can only be imperfective, and the verb endings that signify the present tense of imperfective verbs are utilized for the future tense of perfectives. As for the future form of imperfectives, it is compound. The auxiliary verb is followed by the infinitive form of the main verb, just like in English, except that it is the imperfective future, used for a single state of affairs like I will be writing at the time, or I'm going to write books after I retire. In contrast, a particular resultative scenario, such as I will write this book by Christmas, requires the perfective form. It's worth noting that there are so-called biaspectual verbs in Russian, which can be associated with either of the two aspects when used in the infinitive and past tense forms, but they also have the two future tense options. Aspect is thus a grammatical category. 
However, grammatical and lexical are rather formal notions, and in fact these are different levels of semantics. The aspects are the skeleton of the temporal structure denoted by verbs, and lexical elements flesh out the details. Prefixes provide the logic for the transition to the final state, and so do the so-called punctive perfectives, which represent short-term acts as opposed to sequences of such acts. The imperfective verb prigat refers to the process of jumping, and the punctive verb prignuć denotes a single jump. These forms are marked not with a prefix, but with the suffix nu, or with different variations of the verb stem. So the imperfective brosać denotes the process of throwing, and the perfective brosić refers to a single throw. Many such forms have prefixed extensions. The perfective wybrosić means to throw out, and further produces its own secondary imperfective wybrosilać. Thus, the main purpose of prefixes and punctive forms is to provide certain concepts for resultative events. However, there is also one small but important category in Russian grammar that has to do with the variation in the internal structure of processes. Verbs of motion are a group of imperfective verbs that denote processes such as walking, running, flying, including few transitive ones like carrying or leading. Each of them has two versions, marked with some variations in the verb stems. Usually these two types are called unidirectional and multidirectional. A unidirectional verb conveys a picture of motion to a certain goal, as in I am on my way to the theater. The goal may be unspecified and manifest only in terms of particular trajectory, as in he walked slowly through the city, she ran and ran, please drive after me. The unidirectional type is also used to convey ideas like time running or everything going well. The multidirectional form has two main applications. The first is motion in various directions within a spatial area, walking up and down the room, or walking the streets, uh, or running about the backyard, or jogging in the park, uh, swimming in a pool in the sense of spending time. The second is any kind of repetitive or habitual motion, going to school on a regular basis or shopping every day, running long distances or running after every skirt, uh, traveling to many locations or to the same location but many times. And as well, the general idea of motion, such as my grandpa walks slowly, uh, mermaids can swim underwater, I feel flying, where the unidirectional form used would signify a fear of a particular upcoming flight, or grandpa slowly walking in a particular direction. In fact, direction is not the main criterion in these two types of motion. Habitual going to school is still not quite the same as going to school and back home, nor does long distance running involve running in the opposite direction or using the same racetrack every time. Even in the context of a continuous action, a multidirectional process doesn't always mean the change of direction proper. So in the case of carrying crates, the multidirectional verb refers to multiple transfers, whereas the unidirectional one would mean the progress of carrying several crates at once. However, in the case of multiple transfers, the crates are still traveling in only one direction, and the idea of the porter returning for the next crate stems merely from the fact of repetition. It doesn't matter how he gets back, even if by teleportation or reincarnation. When you read multiple books, you also somehow move on to the next book each time, but you never read backwards. The so-called multidirectional motion is simply iterative, in structure, regardless of the time window scale. Unidirectional motion refers to a single trajectory, either as a moment of motion or the entire path, like he ran for two hours, which still doesn't include the final state. And multidirectional motion consists of such lines separated by some terminations, the meaning of which is revealed in the context. When running back and forth, it is a change of direction, and when carrying crates or attending school, it is the destination point. If a dog runs in a circle, the verb is unidirectional, but if the dog runs in circles, it is multidirectional. Here one circles that kind of segment. Suppose a mouse was running through a maze, and we won't say how long it ran. If it was moving randomly, as it's supposed to, the multidirectional verb is a natural option, since it gives a sense of stopping at dead ends. 
how the unidirectional form may be used for the idea of a steady non-stop progression, or in the sense of summing up the net running time, and in both cases doesn't matter if the mouse eventually reached the exit or we have simply stopped the timer. In the past tense, the multidirectional type is also used for a statement of fact, like we went to the city today, meaning that we have been there, which may give the impression that their returning from there somehow contributes to the entire action. However, this is only a matter of the contextual situation. The phrase I flew to Paris yesterday does apply a round trip, but I flew to Paris when I was young does not. And if you consider solely the experience of particular mode of travel, such as I flew in a hot air balloon, it could have ended in anything, including a crash. This is a routine use of the imperfective aspect to assert the fact of an action in the past, no different from today I wrote with a quill pen. However, an ordinary imperfective can equally refer to a single fragment of the process and to many occasions of it, while in the verbs of motion there are two forms for that. In unidirectional motion, the endpoint is only a property, whereas a statement of fact implies being at the endpoint at least once. We say at least because it's the matter of context. So, in the case of a small grocery store, one could well have managed it more than once in that morning. You can always add twice or more than once to the multidirectional form, unlike the unidirectional one. And to specify the visit to the city as exactly a round trip, there's a prefix perfective schodit. We'll consider it later in the video. However, it is perfective and it focuses on the realization of a particular event as likely planned, which is not always the case. On the other hand, when referring to the fact of carrying a crate to somewhere, you wouldn't ask did you carry that crate, but rather did you bring that crate, which requires a secondary form with a prefix. Now let us turn again to the prefixed verb forms and consider the function of individual prefixes. We will use the verbs of motion as a starting point, as they combine with almost the entire zoo of prefixes. However, there is a certain distinction. There are prefixes denoting purely spatial patterns of relocation, such as inwards, outwards or away, which in the case of motion verbs can be combined only with the unidirectional type. And other prefixes there produce perfectives from both type of verbs of motion, with different final meanings. Besides that, perfectives with spatial meanings mostly do yield secondary imperfective forms, while those expressing temporal patterns usually do not. Note that in the secondary forms of unidirectional verbs, the verb roots often look the same as multidirectional ones, which can be confusing. Let us first take a quick look at the prefixes of the first spatial-only group, and after that we will delve into those related to the temporal structure of the action. The prefix v indicates moving into some area. Voiti means to walk in, to enter. Вбежать means to run into. Влететь means to fly into, into the fog or into the room through the window. In many phrases you can see the identical preposition v used for the destination area, which is however not the only option as one can walk in on somebody or simply walk in, since we already have that in in the prefix and the verb stem only denotes the process of walking. It's the same with non-motion verb stems. Вписать means to write something into, for instance, into a list. The prefix вы represents the opposite concept of moving out. Выйти – to walk out, to exit, and also to come out. This verb is often used without a complement to say that someone has temporarily left the room, but not the immediate vicinity. The latter is conveyed with the prefix у. Уйти – means to live in the sense of going away. However, this morpheme itself doesn't mean away, but rather somehow refers to the orbit of the subject or object, which in other verbs can give different meanings, which we will not delve into here. The prefix при, when applied to motion, conveys arrival. Прийти means to come, приехать means to arrive by car or train, прилететь to fly in, 
The actual sense here is not that of approaching, but rather that of attaching to the endpoint. For this reason, the secondary imperfectives derived from the verbs of motion with this prefix are not used in the progressive function, so the phrase he is coming is translated with the primary unidirection of verb, literally as he is walking, whereas in the case of habitual action he comes here every time, the verb is приходить as expected. The prefix вз refers to an act of rising, взойти to ascend, Split to float to the surface, взлететь to fly up or to rocket. The prefix под basically means under. However, with the unidirectional motion, it denotes a movement aimed to get closer to the object. Подойти means to approach an object located in the same scope as the subject of action. The basic meaning of the prefix о is around. Обуйти – to walk around some obstacle, to bypass something, or to go around all the places in some area. Описать – means to describe, literally to write around, meaning on all sides. The prefix за is used with both uni- and multidirectional stems. Its meaning can be summarized as crossing a certain threshold. The identical preposition за is used in the meaning of behind, for example, behind the door, or in the form of direction out the door, and also across the river, outside the city. In each case, the object itself is located in front of the observer, but the target location is nevertheless behind the back of that object. The prefix за is similarly associated with an area beyond some threshold. If the action implies a change of location, which is true for unidirectional verbs, the area is spatial. Зайти means to go behind something, or to get an area beyond some boundary, or to go into some room for a while, or to drop in on somebody along the way. However, with multidirectional motion and many intransitive activities, за denotes the beginning of a process. Забегать – to start running back and forth. Заговорить – to start speaking. Запрыгать – to start jumping. It is usually an unprepared and spontaneous entry into a process, which is also a kind of crossing of a threshold, and the process assumed to be homogeneous and such that doesn't lead to a definite outcome. Quite tellingly, the verb заработать means to start working, but only in relation to devices, whereas the beginning of human work is indicated trivially with two verbs – начать работать, and it's the same with any actions that are internally complex and resultative, such as cooking, building or writing. Начать писать means to start writing, while записать is used in the meaning to put down, to make a note, or to record something. In addition, the inceptive verbs with the prefix za have no secondary imperfective counterparts, so the meaning of starting work repetitively or progressively is conveyed as начинать работать for both people and devices. Here the question may arise as to how the beginning of a unidirectional motion is expressed. This process is intransitive, but somehow goal-oriented. So far we have considered specific patterns of relocation, such as moving inwards, outwards or behind something, but there is also the case when the subject simply starts moving, or sets a course for a certain destination point. The prefix PO, when used with unidirectional stems, produce perfectives that denote the beginning of a directed motion. The verb Пойти means to go in the sense of departing or heading to somewhere, to work, to the city or to the grocery shop. However, this prefix also combines with multidirectional stamps to form perfectives with the sense that the action was carried out for a while and then ceased. Походить means to walk around for a while and also to attend some place for a certain period of time. This pattern is applicable to many other activities. Поговорить means to talk some or to have a talk with somebody. Поработать means to work for a while. Поесть to eat some or to have a meal, but without any emphasis on whether it has been eaten completely. This pattern is also used to signify a finite sequence of punitive acts like knocking, jumping or waving. 
The prefix po is the most common in Russian verbs, and it is of interest in terms of temporal structure, so we will focus on it in more detail. This prefix is also productive with processes that allow partial results. Po means to read for a while, to spend some time reading, as opposed to pro to read something completely, literally through read. Note that popisat related to writing generally sounds a bit comical because writing is supposed to produce a definite result. Pomit means to wash something like dishes or body part, meaning a complete scenario, but not necessarily a total cleaning, contrast to the more specific form vimit out wash. However, any perfective scenario is in some sense finalized by the subject of action. If the subject would have been shot dead while reading or washing dishes, the only option could be the imperfective form as a reference solely to the process. In some perfectives with a prefix po, the objective effect is implied, but it is not specific, as in the case of verbs denoting deformations. Por white means to tear, paper or fabric, but it can bear partial damage, like that of clothing, unless the context reveals the actual outcome. In contrast, razor white, where the prefix is similar to this, directly means division into parts. Some verbs denote actions that are rather short, but nonetheless showing a fraction of the respective process. Posmotret means to take a look, but not a quick glance, which is denoted by the party verb взглянуть. Or equally, posmotret means to watch something like a movie or to view some data. Podumat means to think, both in the sense of a single thought that came to mind and a certain amount of contemplation. A number of perfectives is used to indicate a relative change in certain quality having happened. For instance, покраснеть to redden, to blush, повеселеть to cheer up, where the result is also not sharply outlined, as the course of change may further continue or reverse. And sometimes an event can be seen as both an achievement and an inception. Полюбить means to like or to love in the sense of gaining this feeling, but rather after a while, because the sense of uh, sudden falling in love is indicated by another verb, влюбиться into love self. Similarly, поверить means to believe, to trust, in the sense of the appearance of this attitude, which is also not an abrupt onset. A very interesting case is the verb подуть, means to blow in the sense of a separate action of wind or a man blowing, and we can think of it as both the beginning of blowing and as the completed blowing of the wind, because it usually subsides quickly, and in the case of a steady wind, it is more appropriate to say began to blow. In the previous video, we mentioned the paradox that the fact of beginning of a process equally implies that some amount of the process has been observed and therefore has already passed. As a consequence, in the case of a short time manifestation of a process, there is no conceptual difference between the beginning and the end of the process. This gives insight into how the prefix po was adapted for the beginning of directional motion. The overall concept of the prefix po is merely a certain fraction of the process, a portion of it, that ends without specific after effects that would require other prefixes used. The previously discussed prefix za cannot be used to denote the beginning of direct motion, not only as adapted to the concept of moving beyond some spatial threshold, but primarily because directed motion is not cyclic internally, unlike the activities combined with the prefix za. There is also the distributive projection of the prefix po, which appears in many transitive perfectives used with a plural object, denoting a situation where many objects have been processed in succession. The imperfective brosite means throwing things, or figuratively abandoning people. The pantive brosit means that it was done rather at a time, and it is a more neutral concept, while po brosite implies the thing thrown or people abandoned one by one, and this is generally used to add some expressivity. However, with a single object, it can equally mean that, for example, someone has been throwing a ball into a basket for a while.
In addition, the prefix PO is often attached to secondary imperfectives with other prefixes, thus actually forming a secondary perfective form with the already mentioned distributive semantics. With the PO prefix itself, however, the secondary imperfective form is not generally used, since you cannot regard an ongoing process as one that is somehow doomed to last for some time. However, there is a limited set of secondary forms that convey a sequence of short-time process executions. Postukivat means knocking or tapping periodically. Postmatrivat means looking at an object from time to time. Postpisivat is colloquially used in the meaning to write casually and rather partially. But it is rather a separate concept, and it cannot be applied, say, to the process of working. You either work or you don't, not speaking of believing or loving. There is also the preposition poor. Basically, it refers to the surface over which someone or something moves, which is conveyed in English in different ways, as walking on a road, or along the road, or down the street, or just using a direct object, as in walking the streets. And if we think of such a surface as a cluster of fractal elements, then it equally means moving by individual points or fractions. The preposition PO is also used for the idea of distribution, so the phrase given two apples, each, is typically rendered in Russian as give them PO two apples. The prefix Pro has the meaning of through. The unidirectional proiti means to go through something, to cover a certain distance, and also to proceed or to pass by something or someone, or simply to pass if the subject is a time period past. And in the multidirectional form, the medium through which the actor passes is not the distance, but time. Prochodit means to spend or waste a period of time specified walking in different directions. Uh, note that it is not the same as the prefix po, since we have a transitive verb with a period of time directly specified and typically rather long. In non-motion verbs, the meaning varies according to the lexical meaning of the root. The prefix do conveys the completion of the remainder. Doiti means to reach, to make it to the destination point while walking. In other verbs, it could mean simply bringing to an end the rest of the process itself. The prefix ot conveys the sense of detaching. Otoiti means to go away in the sense of moving aside, and it's also used colloquially as to be out for a while. Otorovat means to tear off. In the case of a pure activity, this prefix produces a very specific meaning. For example, otrabotet nidelu can only be translated as to work for a week in English, but the original meaning is that all that was expected is done, so the performer is now unrelated to the action. This verb can also be used in the sense of to work off some debt or to perfect some skill. This meaning can also be used with multidirectional stamps, but it's rather a specific expressive approach. The prefix peri in unidirectional verbs conveys the intersection of an object in motion. Periti means to cross something, to walk over the object. For other actions, it may mean a repeat. Periписать means to rewrite and equally to overwrite, which explains the logic. The idea of repetition here is derived from that of overlapping an object. And another meaning used is excessive action, переест, to overeat, which can also be applied to multidirectional motion, перебегать, conveys the result of running too long. In the case of a transitive action and multiple objects, this prefix also may emphasize the sense of an action performed over the entire group sequentially, and in some verbs more than one semantic projection is possible. The prefix is is not very productive. It means essentially from and conveys the meaning of either taking from somewhere or more often of some kind of exhaustion. The general meaning of the prefix na is to move on to or upon something, 
So the unidirectional наехать means to run over something or someone while driving. Налететь means to fly upon something or fall upon someone. However, the verb найти upon walk is utilized for the meaning of to find and requires a direct object. Whenever the action involves relocation, the concept is the same. As you remember, написать means to write something completely, as based on the idea of putting things onto paper, and нарисовать means to draw a picture. In some actions, the meaning develops into a kind of stacking or accumulation. Нарезать means to chop something, наговорить means to say too many things, набросать means to pile a number of things, throwing them, but it can also be used figuratively as to sketch something, as if throwing it on the paper. Note that набросить, derived from the pantip form, means to throw or slip a single item on something, for instance a shawl on someone's shoulders. The meaning of accumulation is used with some multidirectional stems, Натаскать upon carry denotes the result of carrying a quantity of something like firewood in many stages. Налетать means to have a flying time of some number of hours. With the reflective suffix ся and multidirectional motion or human activities like talking or playing, this prefix implies being satisfied with the activity after having it long enough. The prefix раз has a sense similar to that of this. Разобрать means to disassemble. Разбить, literally disbeat, means to break something. Разбросать means to throw about, to strew a number of things. Intransitive verbs with this prefix are used in the reflexive form. The unidirectional разойтись means to split up, to part or to divorce. The forms with multidirectional stamps are used colloquially in the sense like to get out of hand or to go wild, in reference to someone who, for example, runs or drives around too freely, where the doer is like uh, spreading themselves around. The perfective projection of getting angry is also formed with this prefix as a figurative image of self-expanding. The prefix s the last one in this review. Just like the prefix раз has more to do with what happens with the subject or object of the action, and in this respect it is even more remarkable. In some verbs it gives the meaning of to put together. For instance, собрать means to gather, to assemble or to collect. In other verbs the meaning appears as displacement from some surface. For example, сбросить to throw something off from the rock or from the table or to throw one's clothes. It may seem that aggregation and displacement are two different concepts, but there are verbs that show both of them. For instance, смести can be used as both to sweep off the table and to sweep into a heap, depending on the preposition used. In both cases, there is a cluster of particles reassembled in some other place, and that is the actual concept. A telling example is the verb срубить. If the object is a tree or a branch of it, it means to chop down. However, the object is a log house, the meaning is to build it with an axe. A mass of wood is gathered into some new formation. However, as for directed motion, it is primarily associated with displacement, since the subject of action is one and the same. Soiti means to step off from some spot, from the road to the sidewalk or from a doormat, or to go down from some small elevation, or to descend when from a hill or heaven. Still, the process of displacement itself is gradual, whether it is snow coming off the roof or a man getting off the road. And notably, this verb has a reflexive version, meaning convergence for a plural subject. So it is means to come together, to converge or to become close. And transitive directional verbs can convey both convergence and displacement in the non-reflexive form. In perfectus with multidirectional stamps, this prefix signifies the already mentioned round trip, where the subject visits the destination and returns back, which is also a kind of aggregation, only this time of the segments of motion. 
In many known motion transitive verbs, the prefix s conveys the finality of processing something, as also a kind of assemblage. Сделать – to make or to do something completely. Съесть – to eat an object completely, in which case the food is, so to speak, reassembled anew in one's stomach. Сшить – to sew, in the sense of creating a finished piece of clothing. The main purpose of prefixes is to provide the patterns of transition to the result. The perfective aspect is actually a dynamic function that models a change in states and so manifests conceptually a dual structure, and this duality is reflected in the verb forms. Some authors use the term perfective for past tense forms in Romance and other languages, while well, it would be more correct to call these forms aoristic or something else, since they are based rather on the idea of effect or the related action, and as long as such forms contain only a persistent grammatical marker, apart from the verb root proper, the idea of an explicit result of the action can only be deduced from the lexical meaning of the root, along with the context. Suppose you mention that yesterday you ate apples, or that what you had yesterday was apples. This is a separate fact of action, but it's only that the process of your eating these fruits took place, while the details of the completion are obscured. It is therefore imperfective, but in a non-Slavic language it can be aorist, provided there is no focus on the flow of the process, which is the domain of the imperfect verb form. For the Slavic imperfective, on the other hand, it doesn't matter whether you actually ate only a slice of apple or you ate apples for hours. But if there's an explicit idea of completion of the eating process, it must have a specific meaning. You could have consumed the apples so they are all gone, which is denoted by the perfective seest, or you could have eaten some amount, and you can make this some a direct object as well, and also use the verb seest. However, in some other situation, you may want to say simply, I ate a little, without implying any specific food and thus actually quantifying the process itself. This is why there is another perfective, poor yeast. It is normally intransitive, however you may specify the object in the genitive case. In addition, the idea, I finished the apples, is conveyed by the perfective do yeast, while for the meaning I finished eating the apples, the analytic construction is used. And speaking of secondary imperfectives, for the idea, I was finishing my apples when he came, the continuous function does find its use, and there is a secondary form do ye dat used for this. However, as for the full consumption ceased, its imperfective projection mostly makes sense with iterated action, such as every day I ate one apple, that was my diet. And still the same idea can be conveyed with a primary imperfective yeast, and in most contexts there is no any need in highlighting the element-wise dynamics within the process flow. We have a plural object, and we know that in reality apples are eaten one at a time, not shot into the mouth all at once. In the case of motion, however, verbs are intransitive, so we cannot tell whether the actor is, uh, so to speak, eating an apple or apples, and yet it matters whether the motion is a continuous line or a cycle of such lines. Therefore, two separate primary forms are used in the verbs of motion, while more specific patterns of revocation are conveyed in the usual way via prefixed forms. As we can see, the Slavic verb model is all about the structure of the action, and exploring this can help us move beyond the objectifying way of thinking, in which events are seen only as some points on a timeline. We modern people tend to see everything as static, uh, self-sufficient objects, and this is what the world around us look like. Houses, cars, furniture, utensils, even the trees planted separately, unlike those in a deep forest. So imagining not only a tree, but also oneself as a cluster of elements may seem to us somewhat cynical. But there is no point in worrying too much, as the fractions assembled are in turn assemblages of other fractions. 
There are no physical points and therefore no individual objects and no individual events as well, only connections and transitions between other connections and transitions. All around us is emptiness, but this emptiness is full.